What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we're going to be installing some Taiga rear sets intended for an RC390 onto the Vip Pillin 401. So full disclosure guys, uh, I'm not the first person to do this. There was a gentleman on Instagram, his name is Whiskey Echo Moto. Um, he was the first person to put these rear sets on his Vip Pillin. I think his is a 2021 however so because he's the one to do it first i know that there are some things that are needed there are some modifications required to make it work um, but it should be relatively straightforward um, but we'll go over that today that's kind of the purpose of this video um, but this is a modification that i've been thinking about doing for quite some time now uh, it's just one of those things where these rear sets four rear sets they're not very expensive they're they're, they're not bad at all they're about 400 dollars or so um, they're not seven, eight hundred like some of the Moto Course ones and stuff like that. Um, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend that much money on this little bike. Uh, however, the more I, I ride the bike, the more I spend time with it, the more I just I just don't like the rear sets on this bike. I don't like them aesthetically. I don't like the way that they feel. Uh, they feel super super cheap. It is a cheap bike, so I mean you can't really uh, blame Husqvarna or KTM too much for that. But um, but the more I spend time with it, the more I I felt that uh, it was worth it to perform this modification. So let's get into it, you guys. All right, guys, so this is what comes in the package. Of course, you've got your rear sets with all the associated hardware. You have a carbon fiber uh, heel guard. You've got these mounting plates here that have multiple mounting locations for adjustability. You get a little pack of fasteners, sleeves, just kind of miscellaneous, just stuff. Um, and you get these instructions here, which surprisingly are pretty good. So if you want to look through it, obviously I haven't read through the entire instruction booklet, but um, I kind of skimmed through it and the way it's written, it's, it's actually pretty clear and the pictures are, are pretty good. I did see one picture that was a little funky. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so like, like that one there, I'm not so sure about. I don't know what they're trying to, trying to show us in that picture, but. Um, other than that, I mean, the other pictures, though, they're they're pretty clear. So I'll be excited to, to see how good these instructions actually are. You know, of course, to be fair, uh, these rear sets are for an RC390. They're not for a Vip Pillin 401. So it's not going to be totally one-to-one, -one, um, but it should at least give us an idea of what Tyga wants us to do with, uh, with these rear sets. So um, and just FYI, guys, for these Tiger rear sets, there is a set that has a kickstand provision. That's the street set. That's what I have here. And that's this part number, STAA TAC 024. Uh, if you want the provision that, that, if you want the rear set that doesn't have a provision for a kickstand, then it's gonna be the race version, uh, STAA TAC 0124, so. Here's a close up of the rear sets. So for those that don't know, in the past, I bought a bunch of Taiga carbon fiber parts for the Vip Pillin 401. And I've been overall pretty happy with them considering the cost. Uh, there are some flaws with it. They're not the nice, nicest carbon fiber I've ever seen. However, for what they charge you for it, I think that it's fair. Um, I think that that's pretty consistent with these rear sets as well. Pretty good quality, I think totally acceptable, but they're, they're definitely not gonna be like AEM factory quality or moto course quality or something like that. But overall, pretty decent. I'll get you guys a close up here. I mean, you see some machining marks and tooling marks and stuff like that. But really, I mean, you know, not a not a huge deal. Um, anxious to see how the anodizing holds up. Uh, anodizing, if it's, I mean, even if it's high quality anodizing, it does eventually start fading. Um, so we'll see how long, how long this lasts on my bike. But uh, again, quality pretty good. I see there's some funky stuff like on this one here, it's got some nicks in it and stuff like that. It could have even been from shipping, again, to be fair. Uh, not a super huge fan of of this on the uh, on the, the rear brake. It just has like a rubber, this kind of rubber sleeve on it, which eventually, you know, when that wears out, what, what am I going to do with that? Same thing with the shifter here. Eventually, that will wear out. But um, again, for the price, and these were $375.23 from Formula 390. Um, I forget the gentleman's name. I think the gentleman's name is Matt. I think super nice guy. I had a few questions about these rear sets and he was always super nice about it. Uh, he kind of knows about the project that I'm trying to adapt these to uh, a Vip Pillin 401. 
Uh, but anyways, uh, so from Formula 390, $375.23. Uh, for whatever reason, shipping is pretty expensive, uh, $31.12. So total was $406.35 for these. Uh, you will also need one of these, however. So this is a KTM part. This is a bolt from another, uh, this is a bolt from a 390 Duke, I believe. Um, but, and I'll show you why we, uh, why we need this, but there's the, uh, there's the part number guys. So you can go ahead and order it ahead of time. Okay guys. So first hang up in the instructions, it tells you to remove the shifter arm, which is pretty simple. You just pull this boot It actually went here. You pull this boot back and then it's a number five Allen key that you'll, uh, go ahead and use to remove it. It looks like it does have some kind of thread locker on it. So you want to be careful. Don't go nuts on it. Make sure your bit fits tight in the uh, fastener, but also be careful of this. The sleeve just comes right off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape that on there so that way we don't lose it. But first hiccup is uh, they want you to remove the, uh, the kickstand safety switch. So uh, the, they use Phillips screws, which sucks because that means they're really easy to strip. Um, and they're also red Loctite on my camera will focus, but they're also red Loctite on. So what I had to do is I had to use a impact screwdriver, which for you guys that don't know, it's one of these. What you do is, uh, you actually hit the back of this with a hammer and it will turn simultaneously as you strike it. And generally that'll keep from stripping the head. You could still break the head off the fastener, but, uh, for Phillips, screws and stuff like that this is kind of the the way to go um but one of the hiccups too is that they don't tell you that you need to remove this part of the shifter arm here it's blocking the other fastener so i assume that maybe this is different on an rc390 but we are going to need to remove this so what i did was i went ahead and made a marking here so i know what the what the stock location was i'll go ahead and remove this so i can get to that screw there side stand safety switch is off again be super careful with this uh, again for me the impact screwdriver worked perfectly uh, i was a little bit nerve-wracking but it did work and yeah, I, I see why you would use red loctite in this location obviously this is important you can't have this loosening up uh, however it kind of sucks because the side stand switch housing is plastic so you can't heat the fasteners up or anything to loosen the loctite but anyways it is off just be careful uh Swing arm axle nut, we need to loosen. That's a 19 millimeter, and we need to loosen these two fasteners here, which are 14 millimeter. Since we're removing the swing arm axle bolt and nut, we need to support the swing arm to stabilize the bike. So in the Taiga instructions, they depict a bottle jack to be used under your resonator box here. Uh, I don't have a bottle jack. All I have is a floor jack. I think a floor jack is probably going to be more stable. Uh, however, uh, the advantage of a bottle jack would be you have more room to work around it. So if you guys, if you're like me and all you have is a floor jack, then uh, when you support the bike, just make sure that the floor jack is positioned in such a way where it won't get in the way when you're working on the rest of the bike. So um, anyways, got the, got the nut off the swing arm axle bolt. Got this 14 millimeter out. That one came out pretty easily. Uh, the 14 millimeter that's forward of, uh, that's most forward, it's actually, it actually shares, it goes all the way through and it shares this nut here. So on mine, I needed to put a, uh, a combination wrench on this nut to keep it from spinning and I was loosening it. But yes, yeah, a little trick there. That, that one there is the same fastener as here, so you may need to put a nut on the, I mean, a, a combination wrench or socket on the other side. Okay, and then that bolt that went all the way through, so it was a through bolt, went all the way through, through to the other side. You can see how long it is, and this is actually the one that we will be replacing. So, we see the difference there between these two. This is the new one, and this is the old one. And you can see the difference in length and you see just because of the way the threads are, it's not threaded all the way down. You can't just cut the threads to make it equal length. You'll, well, I mean, I, I guess you could, but you wouldn't have the amount of threads that you probably should. So yeah, and that again, and this is part number, there's the part number there. 
John 025102656. It's a KTM part. Um, but yeah, there you go. That is the that is the difference there. Once you have all those fasteners removed, so this nut and the, the two bolts here, the swing arm will just will just come right off. Uh, however, be careful, there's this nylon guide. Mine actually fell out, but the orientation is supposed to be, see how it has that groove there? That goes on the rollers of the chain. So the orientation is supposed to be like that. You know, obviously it's not exact because I don't have all the fasteners and not everything's lined up, but that is the orientation if yours just falls out from the bike like mine did. Now on this side, again, another 14 millimeter. I just use an impact on that. Uh, once you remove this bolt, you can then rotate this rear set. And this is not in the instructions because the rear set on the RC390 is totally different. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the rear set and then remove this 10 millimeter and this 10 millimeter. And that'll take your, uh, all these, the, the, the brake parts and the associated lines off. So boom. Boom, boom, both 10 millimeters. Ah, I really don't like this, but this is what we have to do. So you'll take your floor jack or bottle jack, put it under that resonator box there. That's this guy. You'll jack it up to the point where all the pressure is off of this fastener here. And you'll kind of, you'll kind of notice because the bike will be a little bit, it'll be a little bit wobbly on your, uh, on your stand there. Um, and once you take that pressure off this bolt here, it gets loose and it'll be, and you'll be able to remove it. With all the weight of the bike on that bolt, you're not gonna be able to remove it, at least not without damaging it. So guys, just be super careful when you take the weight off that fastener there because the bike, it will get really unstable. Um, but you'll see when the weight's taken off of it, you'll see how easy it is to turn this bolt. That means that the pressure is, is, is taken off of it. But again, be really careful because the bike, it is unstable. Um, once you, cause basically you're taking most of the weight of the bike off of the stand itself and you're supporting it mostly at the resonator box. Okay guys. So once you get the right side set off, there's one more 10 millimeter you need to remove. It's just, it used to go right here. So pretty straightforward. Just take that 10 millimeter out and there is a cotter pin that needed to be removed as well. And that went here for the, uh, for this rod. So pretty self-explanatory, just bend the cotter pin, pull it out, and then you'll be able to remove this rod here. This next part, guys, is kind of a pain. So once you pull the rear set off, you have to remove this cotter pin. So I'm sorry I didn't do it on camera, but there was actually a cotter pin coming here. Uh, pretty easy, just bend it and remove it like any other cotter pin, nothing special there. Uh, however, in order to remove the rod itself, so as you can see here, I can't, I can't get the pin fully out because the like the heel guard's in the way. So what I need to do is actually remove this arm. So what I've got here is just got a little quarter inch ratchet. I think this is a six mil, I think. Go ahead, loosen this arm, and then we'll be able to remove this rod and we'll be able to put it back in the uh, in the master cylinder here. So in the instructions, it doesn't really tell you about this just because on an RC390, it's totally different. You'll be able to get to all all these uh, devices and fasteners with the set still on the bike. Now, since I don't know exactly what side all these sleeves go to and where all these little miscellaneous fasteners go to, I figured it'd be best to just measure everything at once, weigh everything at once. So I have pretty much the whole Tyga kit on the scale, three pounds, eight ounces. I know it looks a little messy, but as you can see, it's totally, it's completely on the scale there. Oh, actually this little arm is not, but Okay, now it is. Yeah, we're at three pounds, nine ounces. Here's the old rear sets, shift linkage, brake lever, pegs, etc. on the scale. Looks like we've got six pounds, 2.8 ounces. So this is solely what is being removed from the bike and being replaced with the, uh, with the, the Tiger rear sets. Okay, and there we go. We have our first side plate on. Uh, it does take a little bit finagling, a little bit of finagling with the jack. You do have to go up and down with it. Um, at one point, just FYI, the swing arm was way below where I needed it, and I didn't notice. I actually had, I didn't have the the jack handle fully um, fully tightened. So what was happening was the pressure was slowly bleeding off, and that's why I had that difference. But as soon as I jacked it up, it wasn't too big of a deal. 
the bike, it is unstable though. So be very careful that uh, you don't topple the bike over, but uh, it, it's not too bad. I mean, it's still, the swing arm, even though this fastener is out, it's still connected in another area. So it's unstable, but it's not totally disconnected from the motorcycle itself. But anyways, guys, so when you get to this step, you'll go up and down with the jack. Um, make sure that all the pressure is off the swing arm and then you'll be able to put that bolt all the way through to the other side. Next thing I can see that we'll need to do is we'll need to loosen this banjo bolt just a little bit. Obviously we don't wanna um, introduce any air into the system. After this, I'll bleed the brakes anyway, just to make sure. But we need to loosen this just slightly so we could change the orientation of this brake line. So the way this will attach to the new rear set is it will actually be that way, which it looks like it would probably work, but I don't want all this tension on this line here. So what I'm gonna do is loosen this, then I'm gonna make it to where this is total 180 and it's on the other side. So I went ahead and uh, changed the orientation of the brake line, so we're good there. Now what we need to do is we need to remove this push rod. It's just kind of a press fit. It will come straight out. And so I'll show you guys a diagram of what they want. So. What they want you to do is remove this boot. It just pulls right off, no big deal. But you're gonna remove that boot. It comes with this spacer and then it comes with this spring as well. And this is the exact orientation that they want. So just a little bit of an I gotcha. They call this a washer, but it's not really, it's more like a spacer. So I'll show it to you guys. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, I guess it's a washer, but to me, this is more like a spacer just because of the thickness and the type of material it is. It's some kind of aluminum, it's super light, but um, that piece I just showed you, that is this here. So I'm guessing they need this to make up for the difference in length, maybe, with the new uh, rear set, I'm not sure, but again, pretty straightforward, just follow this diagram, make sure yours looks just like this. So rod, boot, spacer, or washer and then your spring looks like that and then we'll put it back on the bike and there it is all mocked up so none of this has been tightened down yet but uh, once you get the the side plate on it's pretty self-explanatory these you're just going to put in whatever position it is that you think you're going to want your foot at so you can move it cant it you can move it up you can move it down so pretty self-explanatory um that brake like brake rod assembly, that's all been done here as well. Again, pretty self-explanatory, it's just been mocked up, but this is how it will go together. So once you put that spacer and spring in here and put the boot back on, that's how it will mock up there. Um, again, move. I move the orientation of this brake line and then your reservoir, reservoir tube I also moved as well. So this thing, it just swivels. So it used to be facing this way, factory. Now I just clocked it to turn this way that way it has a little bit more length on it but there it is pretty much mocked up here's the left side all mocked up pretty straightforward um our challenge here today though is going to be getting this kickstand to work with all the other linkages and stuff like that so i may have to move the position of of these holes here possibly those correspond with with these this spacer came with the kit so make sure it's orientated correctly which it should be that way so you'll see it's at a slight angle on this side as well and this side is is mostly straight so make sure you got it orientated the way i have it there got the side stand fitted and we can see this is our first major issue so uh, this fastener is in however we see the the bolt hole doesn't line up and it's going to be a little tricky getting the angle right so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to mock up everything to see what angle i need to be at i would guess just by eyeballing it i probably need to be something like that um but yeah i mean that's going to be a little bit of a challenge to to make that work properly here it is all mocked up and so the issue that we're having now is even if i could even if the the bolt holes for the kickstand bracket lined up the problem that we're having is the linkage, it actually hits the, the kickstand bracket. So I think what I will do, and this is set up, I put this back in the factory position just so I have a starting point. Uh, so your bike may vary a little bit. It'll just depend on how this was set up from factory. This is just how mine is. So I think 
to solve for this on mine, what I'll do is I will clock this arm a little bit this way. I'll extend this linkage. Obviously, I'll make sure it's still safe. It's not extended too much. Um, but I think that's kind of the only way to do this. I can maybe cut some of the kickstand bracket off just a little bit, but I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather uh, keep it the way it is and just see if I can adjust my way out of this thing. So I actually ended up clocking this linkage uh, bracket this way. Uh, I thought maybe I would get more clearance if I had it clocked more in this direction, but it actually didn't work out. So I actually ended up with more clearance if I clocked it this way. So the original position of this arm was kind of like this, right? So now I have it more this way. That's given me the uh, clearance that I think I'll need. Obviously I'll need to fine tune the length of this rod and stuff later. But um, as far as the kickstand bracket goes, I'm gonna go with something something like this. You can see the original hole is kind of there and I'm going to go with something like that. I think that'll give me the maximum amount of clearance that I'll need. Um, you'll notice, so anytime you have a recessed hole like that, it's hard to mark it because your, your pen or pencil sometimes can't fit in there. So uh, what I suggest is getting one of these. Um, you'll see a lot of construction dudes using these things. And basically what it is, this is pressurized. And whenever you have a hole that's recessed, you can put, put it in the recessed hole, push on it, and it will actually shoot a little dot of paint into the hole and then that way you'll you'll have your your marking so let's get to it and there's my hole that i drilled there um, i used a 3 8 drill then opened it up just a little bit with a file uh, then deburred it and then i just put a little bit of black paint in there a little bit of a sorry a little bit of etching primer and then a little bit of black paint just to cover up the bare metal um, you know, it doesn't look bad i think this will work just another note, be careful on your aluminum kickstand bracket. Uh, mine, one of the threads needed to be chased on the uh, on the bracket side. The fastener itself was fine, but uh, on the bracket itself, I needed to uh, to chase it with a, uh, with a tap. So just FYI. And there it is, mostly mocked up. So on the left side, got this thing pretty much looking the way it should. I think our angle is gonna work here as far as our kickstand goes. But there is another issue. Um, so I can get a good picture of it. So this one here. So what's happening is I can't tighten this all the way because it is bottoming out on the bracket to the uh, the resonator. So I've got it about as tight as I can make it, and you can see I've still got however much that is, like a quarter inch or so. Um, so I know I've got to grind off or cut about a quarter inch off this bolt. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay guys, and here's the bolt that we have to cut. I'm gonna take about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more off this. That's about two threads. Um, just a tip, if you have a nut that will go on this bolt, uh, before you cut it, put the nut all the way on the bolt, cut it or grind it, whatever you're gonna do, and then remove that nut. That action of removing the nut will actually clean up the threads. So that way you won't have to chase it after you're uh, done grinding it. All mocked up. Uh, I've got to torque everything down and I'll try to get you guys the torque specs in just a moment. In the Taiga instructions, there's some torque specs, but not for everything. So I'll have to look all those up, but uh, I did get it all going. Um, you can kind of see from the footage here, kind of how I have my angle set up. Um, Sorry, I can't really measure all this stuff for you. It's a little bit difficult to get an actual measurement um, for this arm as far as angle and stuff like that. But you can see how tight everything fits. I mean, there's just, there's not, not much room between any of any of the linkages. So it's gotta fit just so. So mine's clearing, but it it is very, very close. You can kind of see when you run up through the transmission, I've got clearance, but I don't have a, a ton. So it takes some time to get all your angles right, get your, your linkage length right. Again, I'll show you kind of how I have mine so you can get an idea, at least where to start from. Every bike's gonna be a little bit different, but it looks like we're in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything down and get everything adjusted. I'm seeing another big problem here with the right side. So I've got this all tightened up. I've got this one torqued down, but you know what, I'm noticing that, 
see how we've got this gap here there should be some type of spacer so in the instructions it doesn't say anything about this and i'm wondering if on an rc390 it's completely different but uh in the kit they do give you these spacers which are supposed to be for the left side of the bike if you're not using a kickstand so this if you're not using a kickstand so this will basically both these spacers will basically take the place of the kickstand bracket but i think what i could do is i think i can use these on this side i may have to cut them a little bit but uh, kind of another thing that you'll have to figure out on your own or modify on your own if you want to put these on your bike so guys, I think the spacers, they will work. The spacers that were intended to delete the kickstand. You guys can kind of see where I'm going with this. I went ahead and taped it off. Uh, looks like I taped it off crooked, so I'll have to retape it again, but um, I'll have to remeasure, retape it. But you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm going to cut, grind this down a little bit so that way I could use it to uh, strengthen that, that area behind that side bracket. Thankfully, my spacer idea did work. So here they are here. And again, I did have to cut a little bit off of it, but there's one behind this bolt, and then there's one behind here. Obviously, I can't really film this one too well, but it, it looks exactly the same as this one. I cut them to the same length, and it just supports this bracket as you torque it down. And speaking of torque specs, uh, I want to apologize. Earlier, I mentioned that in the Taiga instructions, there, are, oh, there were only some torque specs there. They actually are all in there. I just didn't notice it was uh, in a different part of the instruction manual. So I apologize for that, but they are there. My fault, I should have looked a little bit better. Um, but basically what happens is uh, this is 104 foot pounds. These are 36, both these, and these are 18 foot pounds. So um, these are all torqued down now. Uh, Additionally, I would use thread lock on pretty much everything, whether it be Vibratite or Loctite. On this bike, they use from the factory, they use a lot of red Loctite. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm, I'm using blue Loctite on mine, but again, that's just what works for me. Blue, blue Vibratite has always worked really, really well for motorsport applications, uh, at least in my experience. So that's just what I'm using here. Um, the only places that I wouldn't use thread lock are areas like this, which actually have lock nuts. Um, nylon lock nuts, if you don't know what they look like, I apologize. I didn't take a video or a picture of them earlier so you can have a visual. But all they are, they're just a nut that has a little nylon ring on the uh, inner part of the nut. A lot of times they'll be blue, they'll be red, they'll be green. You'll see this little piece of rubber or nylon on the inner part. That's a lock nut. You typically shouldn't use thread lock on those because sometimes the thread lock can actually make that nylon degrade. Um, but anywhere else that's not using that type of nut, I would put some type of thread lock on it. But these are all torqued down. I'm gonna check them out, uh, maybe adjust them a little bit. But for the most part, this side looks like it's good to go. And there they are guys. So completely installed, working, working perfect. Uh, much better than the OEM sets in my opinion, but everything's all torqued down. Haven't gone for a ride yet. I think later on I'll do a actual review of the rear sets themselves, but I don't want this video to go too long. So I'll make it a, uh, a separate one. Um, not too bad of an install. However, if all you have is just kind of really basic hand tools, you're probably not going to be able to do this just to be honest with you uh you know i don't have every single tool there is there's still some tools that i need to get but i have quite a few um you know like you need a grinder you need sharp drill bits uh tap and dies would really help so um, nothing too crazy but obviously various torque wrenches there were some other uh, kind of weird extensions and stuff that i needed to get into certain areas a little bit easier uh, so in my opinion it's it requires more than just a, a socket set and uh, some screwdrivers but there they are they are on there now so way better than let me grab one of these old ones i mean way better than than the old rear set so way better a uh, little bit lighter as well right we lost a couple pounds but really just a lot more comfortable just way more aesthetically pleasing they don't look super cheap like the uh the factory ones. guys that's how to install tiger performance 
rear sets on a Husqvarna Bitpillin 401. Again, the rear sets that I bought were intended for an RC390, so they do require some modifications. As you saw in the video, we had to modify the kickstand bracket, make those spacers for the right side side plate, we had to cut one of the bolts and we really had to finesse the shifter linkage, kickstand angle and so forth to get it to all kind of work together nicely and not interfere with each other. Um, as far as time to install for me, uh, including filming, it took about six and a half hours to, to do it from start to finish. Um, I have, I don't have a full shop or anything like that, but I have quite a bit of tools here. So uh, that certainly helps. Um, just little things like cutting fluid, tap and dies, uh, grind various types of grinders and stuff like that. That really helped today. So uh, again, I'll say that if you kind of just have a driveway to work on your bike or maybe live in an apartment and you only have kind of just a, a basic set of hand tools, just ratchets, sockets, some screwdrivers, some wrenches and stuff like that, maybe some pliers, you're probably not gonna be able to do this. Uh, you'll probably have to borrow somebody's tools or have a shop do it for you. Um, but, uh, as far as my satisfaction, the aesthetics, I think they look way better than what we had before. I did lose some weight, although not much. It was a couple pounds, um, as you saw earlier in the video. Um, later on, I think I'll do a full review of the rear sets themselves, but this video, I want to just keep it just the tutorial on how to install it just because it's kind of a, it's kind of a hassle again. It's not super hard but it's also not as straightforward as following the instructions, taking the old rear sets off and putting the new ones on. So um, anyways, guys, I hope that helps somebody. I hope uh, this kind of uh, inspires you to, to do this modification on your bit pillin or spark pillin. Um, and uh, if you like what you see, if you could please subscribe, it really help me a lot. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you so much.